Good morning. <clears throat> Our Bible readings are from Exodus chapter 20 and Ephesians chapter 5. If you would like a Bible, if you would like to just raise your hand, someone will bring one to you. Exodus chapter 20, <clears throat> verses 1 to 21. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold guiltless any, anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Let's go across to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the, light of, the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Thanks, Naomi. If you'd like to turn back to that first passage that we read, Exodus 20, that's where we'll be. And uh, let me pray for us. Loving Father, 
in your perfect law there is freedom and we pray that you would open our eyes to the wonderful things that are in your law and so that we can delight in them in jesus name amen i want you to um picture a young man called billy he's vi billy's visiting his grandma for the weekend and uh, he goes to her church on a sunday morning it's a 8 a.m. Anglican prayer book service. And he sits there with his grandma, and right before they pray the prayer of confession, where they confess their sins to God, the Ten Commandments are read out. And Billy's sitting there, and he's squirming, and he's thinking, is this a time warp I'm in? Who reads this anymore? I've never, this is crazy. This is so restrictive. Uh, this, is, this is stopping me from from being who I want to be. And it, he's thinking about, you know, the, the ad that he saw during the state of origin for a, for a ute. You know, you can go your own way. And he's thinking about all those Disney movies he watched as a kid that encouraged him to, you know, follow his own dreams and to be who he wants to be. And, except he's not thinking about any of that because he doesn't know why he thinks the way that he does. It's just so ingrained in him in the culture to march to the beat of your own drum, to be who you want to be, to be true to yourself. And he doesn't even know why he thinks the way that he does. Now, we've come this morning to look at an ancient legal code called the Ten Commandments. And every legal system in the world goes back to this one. And it, if you understand these commandments properly, I want to say you won't think like Billy. If you understand the Ten Commandments properly, you'll think, wow, these are so amazing, and you'll find true freedom. Why? Why will you find true freedom if you understand these commands? Well, because they teach us three things. They teach us about God, they teach us about ourselves, and they'll teach us, rightly understood, how to live. And so let's think about this. The Ten Commandments teach us about God. Look at Exodus 20, verse 1. It says, God spoke these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Hey, you remember the story, don't you? The bad king took the princess as his slave. That's Israel. But the good king freed the princess. That's God. And he married her. And a whole nation of slaves were gathered around Mount Sinai for their wedding ceremony with God. And now, once they're married, what does he do? He tells them how to live in this brand new relationship that they're in. See, first we get the rescue of the slaves, and then we get the commands on how to live. Now, the order is very important, as we've seen. First salvation and then law. First command, and then obedience. It's the same for us. You are saved first by grace, and then you obey God. Okay, You don't obey in order to get saved. No, you're saved first, and then you obey. That's how it works. And God is saying to his people, see verse 2, I am the Lord, your God. Do you see that? Your God. In other words, we're bound to each other now. We're married. I am yours and you are mine. We're bound legally. That, that, by the way, that's why the Ten Commandments are written on two stone tablets. Why are they written on two stone tablets? Was it because they ran out of room when they got to number six and they thought, we better start a new one? No. You know why they're written on two tablets? It's because there's one copy for God and there's one copy for the people, right? They're binding for each other. They're, they're like the wedding rings in a marriage ceremony, one for each party. And Israel would have heard these laws, and they wouldn't have thought like Billy, oh, how restrictive they are. You know, you brought us out in the desert to give us all these ten rules. No, no. Israel would have thought, wow. What a wonderful lawmaker that we have to give us these beautiful laws. You know, you think about it. Up until this time, they were living with a tyrant. 
for their lawmaker, Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was the lawmaker who said to them, I am your God, you are to worship me, you are to work seven days a week for me, there's no time off, and you are to honour me even above your own family, and if you don't obey me, I'll murder you. You see, his evil laws reflected the evil in his heart. And then God rescues them. And God gives them his laws. And he says, now I am your God. And you're not to go back to worship any of those other gods. Just worship me. And you are to not just work seven days. Take one day off. Rest. And murder is evil. And you are to honour your parents. How would have Israel thought to hear this? They would have thought, wow, this is so different. What a relief this is. What freedom this is. Because every single one of these commands, do you realise, is stamped with the character of God. These laws tell us something about the lawmaker. So let's think about these commands and what they tell us about the lawmaker uh, what do they tell us about God? The first command is, you shall have no other gods before me. The first command is saying, God is the only God. There is no other. Worship no one else but me. He alone is God. See, this is the God who is in a league of his own. He won't share his glory with anyone else. And the second commandment is, you shall not make for yourself an idol. And he tells us why. Because God is a jealous God. God's like a married man who won't share his spouse with anyone else. And the third command is about respecting God's name. We are to treat God's name with honour and respect. Why? Because God is holy. And you respect a holy God. You honour a holy God. And so is his name holy. And the fourth command is about keeping the Sabbath. See, why was Israel to work six days and take the seventh day off? It's because that's what God did when he created the world. He worked for six days and he took the seventh off. And we are to work and rest because our God worked and rested. It's about God. The fifth command is about respecting authority. Honour your father and your mother. Why do you think that is? It's because God made authority and God himself is your father. And we are to honour him as our father. The sixth command is you shall not murder. See here God, God forbids the taking of a life. Why? It's because God is a life-giving God. And it's God is the one who gives life and God is the one who takes away life, whether it's at the beginning of life or whether it's at the end of life. God is the Lord over death and life, not us. And the seventh command is you shall not commit adultery. See, God says don't cheat on your spouse. Sex is to, to be preserved for marriage and marriage alone. Why? Because it's a reflection of the faithfulness of God. Our God is a faithful God. And he wants us to be faithful as well. And the eighth command is about stealing. We aren't to take what is not ours, whether it's property or money or intellectual property or even you know, in this day and age, pirating software or downloading things that aren't ours. Why? Because everything belongs to God. It's all his. He owns it. It's not ours to take. It's his. And the ninth command is about telling the truth because our God is a God of truth. Our God doesn't deceive. All that he says and all that he does is, is true. And the tenth commandment is about contentment. You shall not covet. See, what's coveting? Coveting is when you want something that you don't own. 
It's something that God has not given you and you want it. And you see what you're saying? You're saying, God, you haven't given me all that I need. I need more than you've given me. Um, because God is our provider. And, and he's the one who provides. And we should look to his provision. See, all these laws are showing us what the lawmaker is like. They're showing us what our God is like. See, God's not saying, don't just think I made up these laws because I had a bad day one day and I felt like, you know, giving you some, some difficulty in life. No, these laws are actually a reflection of what I'm like. They show you what I am like in my character. They show you that I'm a God who loves truth. I provide for people. I love justice. I worked and I rest. And these laws show you what matters to my own heart. Do you see, when you break these commands, you're not just breaking a rule. You're actually violating God's character. You're making a direct assault upon God himself. Let me put it positively. When you keep these commands, you know what you're doing? You're showing what God is like. You're becoming like the God whom you worship. And that, my friends, is the way of true freedom and flourishing. When you become like God himself in the way that you live, when you reflect his character in your lifestyle, that's freedom. See, these Ten Commandments profoundly show us what our God is like. But secondly, they also show us our design. They, show us, uh, they teach us about ourselves. Sorry, they teach us about ourselves by showing us about our design. See, these commands show us what we're designed for. See, did you notice we have four commands about God and then six commands about each other? Okay? And this is telling us the meaning of life. This is telling us what it is we're designed for. See, what were you designed for? It's this. You were made to live in a loving relationship with God and loving relationships with each other. That's what life is about. And that, that's what these commands are showing us. See, the first four tell us that you and I were designed to love God. How do we love God? We love him by giving our heart to him, by worshipping him and him only, by loving him and honouring him and revering him and taking time out to rest and to enjoy him. That's what it's showing us. That's how we love him. But the next six tell us the way we're designed to love others. See, we love others by honouring our parents, by not harming people, by not stealing from them, by speaking the truth, by not being envious of their possessions. That's how we love others. You are made to love God and love others. Do You see, these commands are showing us our design. They're showing us our reality. A few years ago, I went to the doctor and um, he looked at my blood um, test and he, he said to me, David, hamburgers are a sometimes meal. They're not an everyday meal. <laughs> and I said to my doctor, how dare you? You know, you're restricting me. You're stopping me from being who I want to be. You're stopping me from living up to my dreams of eating hamburgers. That's not what I said, all right? But imagine if I did. But isn't that how people live? You know, we think, oh, God wants to restrict me. He wants to stop me from being who I am. But see, a person who, with, with high cholesterol who doesn't listen to their doctor is having the very fabric of their unbeing unravel, all right? And, and see, God's saying to us, I made these rules not just to show you who's boss and to show you that I'm bigger than you. No, my rules reflect my creation and my rules reflect my wisdom. My rules reflect the reality of how I have made you to be. And see, when you obey these rules, you're living 
the way that God designed you to live. When you disobey, the very fabric of your being unravels. See, these commandments are telling us something about our design, the way that God's designed us. But do you know what? These Ten Commandments are also showing us something else about ourselves. They're showing us our very heart. What's your heart like? Look at the Tenth Command. You shall not covet. How can you tell someone is breaking that command? How do you please a command like that? You know, you say to someone, oh, you're looking too long at your neighbor's swimming pool. You're coveting, right? You're, you're, you're looking through their window and looking at their flat screen TV, which is bigger than yours. You're coveting. How, do, how can you tell when someone has broken the 10th commandment? You see, the other commandments, you can tell when people are breaking those commands, can't you? You can see people cheating on someone or, or killing someone or stealing something or lying. But see, the 10th commandment is all about something that is invisible, something that takes place inside your heart. It's not an action, but it's actually a desire. And friends, now we begin to see how high the bar is for God's law, these commands. And this is exactly the same way in which Jesus taught us to read these commandments. So you think about the seventh commandment. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Sorry, it should be 5 there, not 7. Matthew 5, 27. It says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You might think that the commandment about don't commit adultery was all about what you do with your private parts. But Jesus said, no, it actually begins with your thought life. It begins with your desires what goes on inside your heart. It begins with where you look. It, goes, it, it begins with what lurks inside your own heart. That's what Jesus is saying about the commands. When Jesus talks about the sixth command, he says it's not just about murder. It's about the anger in your heart, the hatred in your heart that leads to the murder. See, the problem is the problem of the human heart. That's what Jesus says. And what the law is like, is it's like, it's not just a mirror to God, but the mirror reflects back on us. And it shows us what our own hearts are like. And it's not pretty. The law shows us how unclean our own heart is. And we see how high the bar is for keeping God's law. It's impossible. And it gets worse, I'm afraid, because breaking God's law puts you under God's curse, which is death. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, Cursed is anyone who does, does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. You've got to keep it all. Keep the Ten Commandments and keep the... The, that, the Ten Commandments are just the headlines. The, 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 the rest of the law tells you a reflection of the Ten Commandments. And you've got to keep it all. So how are we supposed to live? What are we supposed to do? Um, we'll never be able to do this. We'll never be able to keep this. So there's a problem with my heart. No matter how hard I try, I'll never be able to keep these laws. In fact, Israel could never keep these laws. You know, in a few chapters' time, they'll break the very first commandment by making their own idol out of gold into a calf and they'll worship it. See, the law could never change sinful hearts. And you might be someone who, who thinks, actually, I think I can keep the Ten Commandments. Um, I think I am pretty good, actually, and I have kept all the Ten Commandments, and I would politely say to you, if that's you, then guess what? 
you've just broken commandment number one. You know why? Because you have made an idol out of your own ability to keep the Ten Commandments. And you're not putting your faith and your trust and your hope in God. You know where your faith and your hope and trust is? In yourself and your own abilities. And if you've done that, you have become your own idol. So what hope do we have? How are we supposed to live when we can't keep these Ten Commandments? Even trying to keep them, we're breaking the first commandment. Why did God give these Ten Commandments to his people in the first place if they could never keep them? You know why? It's because through the law, we become aware of sin. See, th again, think of the law as a mirror. What did you do when you got up this morning? One of the first things you did, hopefully, was that you went to look in the mirror. You know, you went to look in the mirror and you thought, oh no! And you took all the, the mud pack off your face. You took the curlers out of your hair. And that's just the fellas, ladies. What did you do when you got up this morning, huh? You, see, what's the mirror there for? The mirror is there to tell you what's wrong. The, the, the law shows us what is wrong with us. Why? What, what does it do next? Well, it... It tells us what we need to fix. And the problem is we can't fix it ourselves. So you know, you know what the law does? The purpose of the law, the purpose of these commandments is to drive us into the arms of our Saviour. Oh, you'll never keep these laws. You'll never keep these commands. Ah, but there's one person who did. There's one person who kept all these commands in their entirety. Matthew chapter 5 Verse 17 says this, Jesus says, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I've come to fulfill them. How did Jesus fulfill the Ten Commandments? You know how he did it? He kept them. He obeyed them. That's how he fulfilled it. He, he loved God and he loved people the way that we should. And we could work through each of these Ten Commandments and we could go back and we could think about how Jesus obeyed each of these Ten Commandments. And that's a good thing to think about. But commandment number one, no other gods but me. You know what Jesus said to his Father? You, he said, I have brought glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. John 17, 4. Oh, he had no other God but his Father. Commandment number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Jesus lived out the true intention of the Sabbath. He brought healing and forgiveness and wholeness to people. Command number five, honor your father and mother. You know what Jesus said? John 14, 31, I love the Father and I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Jesus, he's the one who didn't steal from anyone. Instead, what did he do? He gave his life for people. He never lied. This is the one who said, I am the truth. Every act of love, every word that he spoke, everything that flowed and poured out of his heart, Jesus Christ embodied the law. He lived out the law. He obeyed the Ten Commandments. And he did that for you. He did that for you. You know, we often talk about how Jesus died on the cross for us. And he did. He did die on the cross for us to pay for our sins. But that's not all he did. He also lived the life that you and I couldn't ever possibly live. He lived that life of obedience that we could never live. He kept the law for us. And look, maybe this week, not maybe, definitely this week, you failed him, haven't you? Just like I have. You know, maybe you've done something this week that you really feel ashamed of. Maybe you've committed adultery in your heart. Maybe you've actually committed adultery. 
Maybe you've told a lie. Maybe you've, you know, made a God out of getting married or, or a God out of your children. I don't know. But see, when we look in the mirror of the law, we failed. We haven't obeyed. Ah, but when you look at Jesus, we see one who perfectly obeyed. And if you've put your trust in Jesus, then you are in him. And his death is yours, but his life, his perfect life is also yours. And God has picked you up out of your sin and he has placed you in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are now in him. God has credited the righteous life of Jesus to you. It's yours. You're perfect. You're a 10 out of 10. And so how then shall we live? How do we live now in response to the law? Do we have to, oh, Jesus kept it. I don't have to worry about it now. No, we keep the law too. Why? Not because it saves us. Not because it earns us brownie points with God. It's because we are in Christ. And Jesus is our identity. And what we've got to do now is live out who we are. Live out our identity. You know, we, we're people who rejoice that we're already righteous. We rejoice that when God sees us, he sees the perfect righteousness of Christ. You don't need to work hard anymore for God to count you as righteous. That's yours by faith in Jesus. It comes as a gift. And so if you're someone who delights in that, then what should we do? Well, we should find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what delights our God and do those things. See, the law tells us the heart of God. The law tells us what pleases God. It shows us how to live. And that's why so much of the Ten Commandments are picked up from the Old Testament and are plonked down in the New Testament to tell us and guide us about how to live. You know, Colossians chapter 3 tells us that greed is idolatry. Ephesians 4 tells us not to lie to each other, but to speak the truth in love. Romans 13 tells us that the commandments can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, love is the way for us. Love God love each other and if you see jesus christ keeping the law for you if you're someone who delights in what he did for you then you know what that does that takes away any fear that you might have about not keeping the law you don't live in fear anymore because now you can walk in freedom now you can please him and what that does is that changes your heart from the inside so that you want to love god and love others and so back to Billy visiting his grandmother's church, right? He's sitting there thinking about the Ten Commandments and he's thinking, this is so restrictive. No, if you understand the Ten Commandments rightly, they'll show you the way of freedom. They'll show you how to be true to Jesus. I want to say to us this morning, don't live life marching to the beat of your own drum don't you know think about being true to yourself no why shouldn't christians be true to themselves it's because our old self died and your life has been picked up and is now hidden in the lord jesus christ you're alive in him and so live out the commands because you're alive in Jesus. Dead to sin, alive to Christ. That's how to live. That's the way of freedom. I'll pray for us. Loving Father, we pray that you would keep showing us the things in your law that you delight in, the things that are on your heart. And we pray that as your precious people that you have saved, that you would continue to work in us that which is pleasing to you as we 
desire to please you with our lives. And we pray it for Jesus' sake. Amen.